What's up, YouTube and other privileged territories with internet? This is DevTrast coming at you with episode six of our DevTrast devlog for Space Imperialist Idol. So this week, awesome week, we got the markets working. The markets are in our favor. Wall Street bets better take note. <laughs> because this, uh, this, these markets, yeah, they're not only going to the moon, they're going to Saturn, they're going to Jupiter, they're going to Pluto, they're going to unexplored space, okay? So y'all better pay attention because this is about to be hot, all right? So let's get it started. Let me show you what I got going on this week. Let's summon those infinite dev traps like shablam. There they go. And then let's pull up our other windows. So for our timesheet, Here's what we got. Uh, so we recorded Devlog 5. Um, so that only took 30 minutes. That was a nice little 30 minute uh, venture. And I imagine this one won't take uh, as long either. But uh, yeah, pretty short one. Um, we did have quite a bit of work done on 313 on day 50. The big 5-0. Yep. Whoop, whoop. The, we had a zero day before that, and I don't have any cool stories about that. I was just tired and felt lazy and just couldn't, couldn't get, get through it. But I've been really, really passionate the past couple of days, so I got hit with some, got hit with that motivation juice, and just have been at it uh, ever since this day here, day fifty. So I edited and uploaded Devlog five, and I also updated all the thumbnails. So you'll see if you go back to any of the previous episodes or the previous devlogs, um, they, it doesn't have the thumbnail of all the different like like the hacker code and the the scripts. Uh, and the different, like, the bar chart over there in the, I think it was the right-hand side. And instead, we have this cool, um, this cool background, or we have a space background. It's not this particular one, but I thought, I'm making a space game. Why the heck am I using graphs and scripts and uh, rectangles that just spiral into each other as my desktop background and as my, um, as my background on my YouTube videos and thumbnails and things like that. So... We, uh, we're changing it up. Yeah, that's right. This this episode, it's we're getting an upgrade. So the markets get upgraded. Oh, I don't need that. Markets get upgraded. Backgrounds get upgraded. Thumbnails get upgraded. It's upgrades all around. You know, I told you, we're going, we're going to the moon with this one. Rockets. So uh, after I did that, updated all the thumbnails, that took a little bit of time um, because I accidentally saved over one of my projects in Photoshop. So my episode one... Uh, thumbnail had you know all my different all the different text elements and the different graphics on it and when I made I think it was number four uh, episode four in Photoshop I accidentally saved it over episode one so hey new mistake wasn't too big of a deal I was able to just you know grab all the elements of the actual picture and then paste them into the new one so I didn't take too much time but the next day, I created the sell goods button and sell goods. So we we last devlog you saw, we created the way to make the goods and the goods are what's going to be sold and they're going to sell for a pretty high price sometimes. See, this is, the, this is where the market gets in and this is where we need Wall Street Bets help. Um, not to make the game because God forbid, who knows what they would make if they were to make the game. But... Uh, we will, uh, you know, I do need some ideas as uh, as far as what a market can do. So far, I have two scenarios. I have the default, which is pretty standard. You know, it can go up and down, and it's randomized. So um, we'll just we'll just play the game right now, and I'll show you what I got going on. So as you can see, you know, I haven't made any changes here. Uh, I did put a status bar here because I needed to know like when events were triggering. So I'm going to keep this here for now. I will eventually remove it um, or put it into like some sort of UI element. Um, but I, this is really handy for me when I have several things that I need to make sure that they're working correctly. So you see here, it's telling the market condition that it's in. So the first one that I created was called a V trend. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to drive the market into a V. So the price is going to go down three times and it's going to go up three times and it's going to do that in a random range. And so you'll see here the value per good right here is what the price that you can sell your goods at. And so, you know, it's as it goes through, it's it does a random check. And so let me pull up the script here. Um, I believe I put it in world event. Yeah. So market trend that's here. So what it does is it has a generation chance that I created. So 
here, can you guys see that? Hold on, let me check my, my OBS here. Can you guys see the market? Tra oh yeah, you can, okay. So this gen chance, um, it has a 25% chance to do default market condition, I think, and then a anything past 25%. Um, so basically, if it, if it generates 25 or lower in this, then it's going to um, do the market default. Otherwise, it's going to do this V trend. And so it's going to go down, then it's going to go up. Um, and then the default market, that one just every couple seconds, it goes up one and then it goes down one um, based on the same range. It's the, the prices will choose a range between $1 and $5. And then it'll choose to either go up or down based on where it's at. So you can get some pretty cool fluctuations in there, as you can see here. Um, I started the base price of the goods out at $10, but you can make some serious money if you're watching the trends. So my idea here is that going forward, you know, there's going to be these world events. And that's what this world event script is for, is that when a, you know, specific conditions are met, maybe it'll trigger a world event and that will cause something to happen in the market, right? So, you know, maybe there was a, a different, you know, a competing company that had an explosion in their factory. So good prices are just going to, you know, shoot up for X amount of time. Or, you know, maybe there was a disaster within one of your warehouses and you lost product. And because of that, your competitors are able to get a premium price and your goods are, you know, maybe cost are, are valued lower. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. And it's really cool because it introduces a really um, a, a random element. And obviously, like within the upgrades, and this is where they moved up by, by for some reason. And you can see the market default initiated and went back to V trend because of the gen chance. But um it's, re it's really cool. You can see you can do a lot with that. And, uh, you know, with your upgrades. Yeah, I think all you know, you'll be able to if you get into a slump, because one thing that can happen is this this value can go negative. And I plan to keep that in there because there there will have to be some sort of pressure to sell goods. So, you know, at some point, it, I want it to be like, you know, the, the player's choice where, ah, oh, man, maybe I just need to get rid of my goods now. You know, I'm thinking about implementing like a tax system, you know, like every, you know, so often there's taxes that need to be paid and there's like an inventory tax, right? So if you have goods on hand, they get taxed at like a higher rate, you know, than maybe your income or something. I don't know. Um, there's something I can, I can, something I can play around with, but I was really happy with this. So we can, let's check it out. Let's. Let's get it going and I can show you. Oh, and I just moved these buttons. So they're kind of, they're wonky. So sorry about that. It's got two buttons within there. So each of these buttons, um, there's a fake button and a, and a real button. And so when it generally, when it pops up the real button, that's the one that's moving. And then it, it causes the other buttons to go away. And I also have to get rid of this negative money. So uh, in my scripts, when you have enough money to buy something, that's when it'll toggle the real button, but then it never checks again if you can, like it doesn't check if you buy this, like, you know, we're gonna buy another drill, but it doesn't take these two away because it doesn't do another check to make sure that you can, you have the money on hand to do it. So uh, I do plan on implementing like a loan system, maybe at some point so that you can do loans and and whatnot so this is pretty good value per good 53 bucks yeah let's sell all our goods mm -hmm. so all this does is it just sells the good right so you um and you can see boom like i have tons of money now so there's a lot of stuff you can do and i want to i want players to be able to feel like they can manipulate the market you know and they can anticipate things in the market so like they're not going to be able to see when these trends are initiated but i want them to know you know, not not off the bat anyways, but, you know, there will be an upgrade that'll be like maybe a market analyst and the market analyst will be able to look in there uh, and it'll clue the player in and be like, hey, I just noticed a V trend was initiated. So then the player will know, you know, the market analyst will give them a tool tip that'll be like, you know, oh, the price will go down for a little bit, but then it's, it's definitely going to go back up. And so then, you know, the player will wait uh, for the price to go back up that they start to see it dip pretty heavily because while these numbers are really small right now um, I will want these numbers to be reflective as a percentage of You know the players cash. So if the you know when the player has, you know millions of dollars on hand um, You know the, the the value per good is, is going to be probably a lot higher or probably a lot lower 
Um, so depending on how much they are and, you know, maybe it'll fluctuate a lot. Uh, you know, maybe I can go with batch sizes. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do um, that's centered around market manipulation. So I'm really stoked about that and was really happy that I got that implemented. I was having, man, the biggest trouble uh, you can see here on, let's see, created market trend. So that was the V trend and then added uh, default market behavior. Yeah. So this is, this was the day that I was having some trouble and I had to sleep on it. But when, after I created the V trend, I wanted to have a default market behavior that it would just automatically revert back to um, whenever any trend happened in the market. So like, you know, a V trend or, you know, maybe there'll be a W trend where it'll go, you know, down, up, down, up. Um, you know, there'll be obviously like price hikes, there'll be price drops and dips in the market recessions, things like that. But when those particular moments stop, I need it to default back to a normal behavior. And I was, ha I was having the hardest time figuring out how to accomplish that. So if we go to our market scripts, let's go to the market trend script. So this is kind of messy. I will apologize because this was a completely homegrown script. Um, and I just used all my you know, prior knowledge to create this. So I didn't look at a tutorial. Um, and this is, all, this is all me. So it's pretty, pretty ugly. It's really long. Right. So I'm sure a lot of this can be optimized. And I was thinking about that because here's the V trend. And um, essentially what it does is, you know, here's our text saying that it gets initiated. Uh, the int i is just a throwaway variable that is going to be our loop variable. And then the loop number this is how many times I want it to loop. So it's going to loop three times. And so it's saying do this. And so your goods price is going to go from a random range. You know, it's going to take the goods price uh, minus one or you know between goods price negative five it's going to pick a number within that and then that's what it's going to be the goods price and it's going to do a market check so market check uh is up here in the update so what it's doing is it's coming down here and it's checking if market check uh equals false and so if the market check is false then it's going to do a gen chance. And this is our generation variable. So this is what I was talking about earlier about the 25 and anything greater than 25. So if it's less than or equal to 25, then it's going to do the market default. Or if it's greater than or equal to 25 um, and it's less than or equal to 100, then we're going to start the coroutine V trend. And the reason that I have it here, I don't need this right now. But this is what I'm going to use to generate additional scenarios. So, you know, I'm going to obviously change this to be like, you know, between 25 and like 50. And then the next uh, the next scenario is going to be, you know, from like 51 to uh, or from 50 to like 75 and then from 75 to 100, things like that. So I need I need this range in here just for future use. So the V trend, um, it's going to take the price down and it's going to loop. So, you know, check the market check. It's going to mark it uh, to true. And what that does is it stops it from infinitely updating. So one of the problems that I kept running into is when this wasn't in here is it was just it would take the goods price and then it would do this random range and it would subtract whatever range it came up with. And then it would just infinitely subtract. So, I mean, it was going from like, you know, two dollars to like just speed running to negative 900 um, in these two seconds. So this is a, this is waiting for two seconds. And then it would, you know, add a plus one to I, which is just, this is saying, do this loop while I is less than how many loops, right? So it's going to do it three times so far. Um, and then it does the exact same thing, except instead of subtracting the price, it's going to add to the price. So that's the V trend. Um, and then this is just some other stuff. Uh, this wall stopped. So one thing that I learned is that I enumerators, um, I needed to find, I needed to figure out a way to stop this I enumerator. And this is what I was having so much trouble with. And so when I, when I would, when I did this initial V trend, I didn't know how to stop it and then go to a market behavior, a market default. And so I thought I could do that with the, um, well, let's see with the market check variable, because I was just going to have it, you know, mark true or mark false. And that would just generate this loop um, in order to get my new scenario. However, that worked fine for the V trend. But when it came to the market default, because it's the default, what I have, the what I had the default doing is that it's going to do 
this loop all the time and I didn't have a way to stop it um, from doing that. And so it would never generate, even though, even if my gen chance um, was, you know, greater than 25, it would never come back and do this, um, regardless of what I did in here. So I had to, I had to stop this IE enumerator um, coroutine. And that's how I ended up doing it was doing this stopped variable. And it just helped a lot too, because then I know like where the hard stop is and I can do some other stuff, you know, do the, the generate number again and so on and so forth. So um, we got that all working. So I'm really happy with it right now. And I'm really, really happy with where the game's at and where it's going. Um, after I get, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do any more scenarios for the market right now. Um, obviously, it's kind of skewed in the favor of generating the price way up, which is fine. But it's cool now because I have, have everything working. You know, I have some some good stuff. Man, let's see how much money we can make right now. I've never let it run this long, so this would be great. Oh, man. I need to add a batch all button so I can sell all the goods at once. And I think that might be, you know, that might be a variable that we can work with, too, is limiting batch sizes, right? Because if we... if if it's just a single click, that sucks as a player because you're gonna ha you're gonna be able to generate goods up in you know the thousands, I imagine, at some point, um, you know, if not the millions. But uh, one thing that we'll need to work with is you know batch sizes because you know obviously if you sell a bunch of goods, that's going to drive the price down. So that's going to be something that'll impact the market too. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at right now. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. I will see you next week. Have a good Sunday or whenever you're watching this.